I don't know about you guys, when I first watch videos, I always pay attention to how it's colored, if it's lit up correctly, and how it sounds. So today, I actually want to go over how I color grade my films to make sure it pops on the screen and it just looks good in general. And I'll go over all the whole workflow and how I do it. And actually, it's actually pretty simple. So let's get into it. Hi, my name is Wayne. I'm a videographer out here in Baltimore, Maryland, and I've been creating for the last four years. And over those four years, I've gone through different stages of how I color my videos. Hey guys, uh, Editor Wayne here. I kind of messed up in this video and just like totally forgot to explain the difference between color correcting and color grading. Uh, color correcting is like changing the image to make it look right in a natural way, like how its exposure is shown in the video. And then color grading is just like showing how the image can change via colors and how it can interact with your mood and feeling. So from now on, when you're watching this uh, video, you're gonna see that I'm doing both. And it's basically something you'll do naturally when you are color correcting and color grading, you'll kind of just do it hand in hand. So yeah, so back to the video. Peace. When I first started, I did not color at all, and I just used whatever the camera gave me, and I thought it looked amazing. And eventually I learned a couple more things, and I started, you know, changing the colors here and there, kind of changed the contrast, make it flat. I had like a whole flat and moody stage, and then I had a really dark contrasty stage. And now I'm actually like kind of in a neutral phase, but I do have a lot of colors usually to influence my videos. So. What I'm trying to say is that coloring your videos is actually very subjective. So you can have a different style and everybody will have their own little things that they like to do when they color their video. Always try to experiment with what you like personally and, you know, train your eye, um, especially when you're coloring your videos, because color has a lot of meaning, especially if you're like doing like, you know, like tr uh, narrative films or whatnot. So for the purpose of this video, this is just an example of a whole bunch of different types of videos that you can make with your camera. So, and actually speaking of camera, when you first make your videos, you always want to make sure all the settings are dialed in. So for me right now, I'm shooting in 24 frames per second and I have my shutter speed doubled that, which is 50. And my ISO is at my base ISO of 640 since I'm shooting in S-Log3. Now, if I just spoke a little bit too fast there, S-Log3 is a picture profile for my specific camera, which is the Sony a7S III. Some cameras out there, like the Canons, uh, I don't know, like a Canon 80D or T T7, I don't know what it is at these days, T7i, T8i's, they might have a more flat picture profile, which is kind of like the same thing, but you might have a different base ISO, which is probably like around 100. You have to probably Google it and search it up. But for Sony's, when you're shooting an S-Log3, most of the cameras actually have a base ISO of 640. So I expose from that ISO. So when we go through these examples from these three different cameras, you're gonna see how similar the steps are in the workflow when you're color grading all these different little clips. It all has to do with the next step, which is lighting. So making a video is one thing, but if you don't have proper lighting, it will really just affect the whole overall image. So for example, this video right now, I turn off my main fill light, it's gonna look pretty terrible. Now let me turn off the backs. I'll, let, I'll turn off all lights. And now we have a really dark image. Uh, those don't turn off, but we have a really dark image and it just doesn't look good. My, my camera's probably gonna have a hard time autofocusing and it's just not gonna, not gonna look good. So let's turn off the lights again. So this is how it looks with just the fill light and no background lighting you, you'll still get like good colors with like my skin tones and whatnot but the back is probably gonna be grainy and whatnot so i mean unless you want this look it's still a really good look if you guys want to do this type of look again if you don't have enough light you're gonna have a hard time editing and color grading that video and it might not be usable in the end all right so now that we went over how to expose your scene we're gonna finally go into the editing program for me it's gonna be premiere your NLE of choice might be Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, maybe even Sony Vegas. But for me, it will be Premiere. And basically all the things are gonna be close enough to where it just might be a little bit different in terms of tabs and menus in your respective program. Uh, but for Premiere, it's gonna be pretty simple and we'll get right into it. All right, so now we're in Premiere and this is how my uh, windows and tabs are laid out. And it might be different for you guys, especially if you're starting off first. Uh, if you are basically brand new to Premiere, you might have every single tab open. So I suggest taking like five minutes to open and close whatever you need. I would go into Canon or Sony and get your respective LUTs. Uh, for me, it would be this website right here from Sony. I'll have it linked down below. Uh, it will basically brought up to this page where it's just your LUT library. 
and you would go down here and download your Sony look profiles and you'll be sent over here and you just download the cube files right here. All right, so getting back into Premiere, uh, I have these two examples from my recent YouTube videos. And what I like about this is that it's already super flat and that's due because of S-Log3. What you get from using that picture profile is a very flat picture profile. And basically you gotta find a way to color this. What you can do is open up your windows up top over here and find the metric color and you would open up the metric color on the side wherever it's at open basic correction and basically just fiddle with the settings to add more contrast if you would like add shadows highlights whatever but if you got that conversion LUT that i recommended earlier from the sony's website you can just go over here input the LUT. Um, if you haven't input into premiere yet what you would do is hit browse and find that file but i already have it installed so i just click this button right here and boom all my colors are there it's very contrasty and i can honestly leave it at that and that's how i would probably roll if it's a youtube video that's usually what i do it's super super simple and quick and what i would actually do if it's a little underexposed would just add a little bit of highlights like that and boom you get a little more highlights more glow um and then if you can you can make it moodier as a little bit of shadows and there we go add some contrast more contrast into the picture um, again we're going from this to that i mean if i full screen this boom that's a big that's a big difference all right so for the next clip is just this talking head portion from my youtube video uh and i'm gonna again input that lut boom it's gonna be looking like this it's pretty good but i personally don't like how the blues are over here a little bit it just doesn't match with the vibe so what i do is just go to curves over here it's like the third layer down and then you would go to U versus U. And since I know it's a blue, I would just go over here to the blue color line, click it at the end of the purple, and then right over here at the teal, and then put one in the middle, and then I would play around, and there we go. Now you can see over here in the Lumetri scopes, it's actually moving, um, and that's where you're actually contorting the color. So if I wanted to, I can turn it like crazy green or pink, but I think for that video, I made it teal like that. And then boom, it looks pretty cool. It's like orange and teal, which it's a natural complementary uh, two colors. So it works out really well. And that's how I made that video pop. Now, just to get rid of some of these like blue hints over here, what I would actually do is go to U and sat and put it between the two blues and then like, just decrease the saturation ever so slightly. It doesn't have to be too much because if you do, it actually affects the teal. But you don't want to do this too much because you, you might have some artifacting in the video. So I just do it just a little bit and it actually helps out because if I didn't do that, say I do, let's go back to normal. That's how it looks. Put that together and then boom, orange and teal. It looks pretty sick in my opinion. So yeah. So that's the YouTube example. It's very, very simple. Uh, again, it's the conversion lot really doing a lot of the work. Again, it's for free. You can get on their website. I'll have it linked down below. It's super easy. Uh, just to use. So let's go to this next example, which is now an outdoor example. This is actually from a trip from, man, August now. It's been a while. But yeah, super simple. Again, we're gonna add that conversion LUT. Boom. Wow. Instant, instant difference, man. So flat, boom, there we go. And what I would do just to add up a little bit of spice, let's change it up a little bit. Instead of using the basic correction, sometimes I just go on curves this is called the rgb curves and just do a simple s curve bring this down over here and bring up the highlights and then maybe if you want you can do the faded look by bringing this up but i'm not like that anymore i don't really like that look but i think around like 2017 everybody was going after this faded film look uh but i don't really do that what i actually do is add a little bit more contrast by pushing it forward this way and then bring the highlights up a little bit by pushing it up this way just a tad bit if you do it too much you're gonna see it clip you'll see boom now it's clipping I don't want that so just a tad bit but yeah that's how it looks that's usually enough for me and since this is in the same uh, scene what you can actually do is uh, you can copy the settings that you just got and paste it here and make sure your lumetri color is checked and it's as simple as boom but sometimes when you do paste it it's not exactly what you want for example, it's too dark here in my opinion. So what I would do is go back to the curves, bring this back a little bit, move this up, there we go. And then we're gonna bring this back this way. And yeah, if you want this a little bit brighter than what it was earlier, cause this was 
like that, and then boom, easy. There we go, super easy. Again, it's very subjective to how your eye perceives the image. For some people, you might want it darker. For some people, you want it brighter. For me, I don't mind. Whatever my eye likes, I usually edit to that. So yeah, next scene is this one. I'm gonna go again and start over from fresh here because it's a different area. Uh, S-Log3 conversion LUT. And now we have a really good exposed image right here of David. And then what I would just do, if I want to do really quick, add that contrast, boom, bump that up, bump up the highlights, maybe put a little bit more blacks, and maybe more whites. It's really just playing around. And then we can mess with the temperatures if you want, but I think it's already properly exposed uh, in terms of white balance. So I just, I leave it there. And if you want more moody look, you can add a little bit of shadows and pop, make um, David pop out more. And boom, so that's how it looks. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there we go. All right, next one is a wedding example. Uh, this one's really cool, it's outdoors. Nice slow motion shot. We are out in Baltimore, Inner Harbor. And what I'm gonna do again is add that conversion LUT, boom. Look at that, amazing right away. And what I did to this, when I edited this a while back, I added that contrast that I like. And then what I would do is go to curves um, and go to blues. And then I change it to this like aqua color. Cause you can have it like this, but I actually really like it at aqua. And then you can change the saturation if you want. Bring that back and that's how it looks. But if you just want it like normal colors like this, I think it looks fine as well. It's just again, it's bit based on your taste. All right, enough of Sony a7S III footage. I know a lot of people out there can't go go out and get a nice $3,500 camera. So we're gonna be using uh, a6300, which is I think around used, uh, you can get it for like under $500 these days uh, because it's, it, is, it is quite a bit old camera. And this, I actually shot this in a, in the neutral picture profile, no S log, whatnot, whatever. So I'm not going to be using a conversion LUT. And I just put it on like the lowest sharpness, lowest contrast, lowest saturation. And it looks like this. It's close enough to kind of like an S log look or a log look. And it's really, really flat. Uh, and looks like this pretty simple. It's definitely not as flat as S log, but you can still uh, do a lot of a lot more work in terms of color. So what I would do right away is add that contrast, boom, bring down that blacks, boom, bring up the highlights, bring down the shadows, and I think we can bring down the whites just a tad bit, and then we can change the temperature. I think I would like it a little bit warmer, just a tad bit, and increase the saturation, boom. We got ourselves a picture, and it's not too shabby. So we went from this flat look to this it's not that bad i think i'd like a little bit more contrast so what i do is go on curves add two points i just go a little bit like that bring it down a little bit instantly you get contrast and then again i bring the highlights up just a tad bit boom and i think that looks really really good not bad for a 500 hundred dollar camera so for this scene same thing let's start this time at the curves section uh, two points over here, bring this up for contrast. I want this to have a lot of white because it is a white mouse, a little bit of contrast. All right, so we'll head over to basic correction next. I'm gonna add a little bit more contrast again, pop it up more, add the highlights, not too much, it's gonna clip. You can use the Lumetri scope again to see where it's clipping, like right here, but I'll just bring it down a little bit. And then shadows blacks and the whites can stay where it's at to be honest and i guess make it a little bit cool and i think there we go so let's go ahead and play it back and see how it looks boom it's pretty nice all right so lastly we are editing the canon footage which is from my good friend abby and he has a 1dx mark ii which is a pretty decently aged camera at this point but it still shoots like 4k 60 which is really cool this is how it looks straight out of the camera this is c log and he actually kindly gave me his uh, c log conversion LUTs. but from the looks of it it actually looks pretty good straight out of the camera and i'm gonna use let's see he gave me three i think this is based on exposure so 
this one's the second one and this is the third one okay the third one's too bright so we'll use the second one and this is a good starting off point right so what you can do to go about this in terms of the conversion light you can add more contrast like how i like my image to be i love contrast not too much so this is what i would do uh, and then i'd just probably like change the temperature add a little bit more highlights and then i think we can drop down the whites just a tad bit as well and a little bit more blacks again just me mess around with lumetri and you'll eventually like kind of feel it out and how you like your image to be edited and boom yeah looks good in my opinion so this is how it looked without it and then this is how it looks with it not too shabby again we're shooting in like the middle of the day so there's a lot of harsh sunlight that's coming in and again same same area so just probably copy and paste and now it's a little bit too dark again you can change it with the curves so i'll probably like keep it there and then we'll go to basic correction again and see what we got to do to fix this image probably do the curves here and change the saturation i mean i don't really edit canon footage too much but i i use sony so it is what it is in terms of how i like my image with canon some people have different looks uh in terms of how they use their canon profiles but yeah this is how i have edited 1dx mark ii footage which i don't get to do every day which is kind of cool but yeah that's how i would edit everything here um i'm pretty simple when i edit and color grade it's not too complex i don't want to make it too complex there's definitely a lot of people who are hired to color films and whatnot and they go crazy right and i'm I would do that if it's if it's like a job like that but for youtube videos and just like my personal videos i post on instagram i just slap a conversion let change the contrast saturation and the highlights and we're good to go all right so that's it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching uh if you guys have any questions comments i didn't go too detailed on this i'm really not the best with tutorials but i just wanted to give you guys this video because a lot of you guys actually have been requesting for me to go over this topic uh just hit me up in the comments and i'll Try to give my best answer i also have a discord so if you guys want to actually like talk to me personally like just hit me up in discord i'll try to give you guys tips and tricks so yeah that's it for this video guys if you guys like the video hit that like button subscribe for more and i'll see you guys later peace